am very honored and privileged to welcome um, our special guest, our next special guest for today, who is our chief host for today, um, who we gave, we, once we sent the invitation, this, we didn't even have to do any protocol, drama, nothing. We literally did not. He accepted straight off. And we're very honored to have him. He came here, he came on time, and we're very, very privileged to have the presence of His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat. And please, can we stand up and join me in welcoming him? <laughs> a nation, and I'm very happy that Anamdi mentioned some few things, integrity, honor, and he also said that it's in short supply. So how do you build a prosperous nation when integrity is in short supply? It's a dilemma. So the first thing that I think we must do is that society, that family, the family system in our society is broken. And we, that needs to be fixed. So, sorry, I'm not talking about SME now. I'm talking about the nation. But let me, let me say this. Because Namdi also mentioned some few things. That you operate in an economic jungle. Where there are no roots. But let us be clear. If a business is not well structured, it will fail ultimately. That's the bottom line. So don't be scared by that because it's a common denominator. It's common to everybody. So if you are not structured, if I'm going to travel now, Balaji knows me, a lot of people probably knows me in this room. They can't follow me to the airport and say, I ah, know we know him. That's Dr. Amzat. I still need a passport. So it doesn't matter who you are. You must still have that passport that has that data page, that has a picture. So that's the only way you can move from a country to another country. If not, it doesn't matter. You won't enter. The same thing with a business. If you are not structured, you can't fly. So every business must have a structure. What do you, why, why do you exist as a company or as a business? What do you want to do? What's your aim? And then, like he mentioned, your strategy. How do you now want to achieve that aim while you are set up? Because part of the challenge is we, we have created a society of entitlement. We cannot, you know, we, we now feel entitled. And we can build a nation sustainably like that. Everybody that has succeeded will tell you, like he said, integrity, hard work, well, luck, some people say other things. But the reality is, the common denominator again is hard work, hard work, hard work. Because even the Bible says you must walk and pray. In fact, I think it was in that sequence, all true, walk and pray. So if you don't walk, then prayers might not be answered. But may God answer our prayers. But we must also work. So businesses and management experts around the world have agreed that the, the dynamics of sustaining businesses in order to increase profit, meeting customer needs, and changing preferences is key. It's important for every business to understand their customer needs. You must be customer-centric. 
So you must innovate in order to meet the needs of your customer. So there are many great businesses that have collapsed. Many great businesses. Uh, there is no need for us to mention this, but because they did not see the future, clearly, they have collapsed. Not because they are not brilliant, but because they became comfortable. So by innovating, entrepreneurs are able to offer something that is unique, that allows their best uh, customers to have better experience. And the moment you are able to give customer better experience, you profit. In other words, it will, your innovation will allow you to promote the very essence of the growth that you are trying to actually improve upon. So for us in Lagos State, we know that the data shows that we have about 3.3 million SMEs. That the question is how many are structured and how many are not structured. So part of the first thing that we intend to do is to assist businesses to be well structured. So there is a gentleman in Chile that studies why societies, especially in Africa, are sort of underperforming. And then there's De Soto is the man's name. He has a fantastic system where they do, they do this. They do study nation, sovereigns. But we were able to convince him to, to do Lagos. And he did Lagos. Now, what he shows around the world, in Africa, Ethiopia, Egypt, all over, is that 87% on the average of assets are undeclared. They are below the, under the table. Therefore, that woman that we say is poor is actually not poor. She has assets ca that cannot be collateralized. So because it's not documented. So like I said, if I don't have a passport, I can't travel. I don't exist. As far as traveling is concerned, I can't. So if you don't formalize, and that is part of the biggest problem of our people in this part of the world. So people have a land, they have a shop, but it's not, there's no title. So part of the first thing that we have started doing is how do we give title to every owner? So if you have a shop, not just anywhere, in the market, and it's this size, can't you get a title? It's a space. So it may, even if it is one square meter, this size, it's a space. Can you get a title? So if you have a title, it allows you to start to have things that can be collateralized. And that is one of the biggest challenges. So the fact that the, uh, somebody increased, I don't want to get into the argument of VAT increase, but if you look at the data for our country, revenue to GDP is the lowest in the world, 6%. Ghana is 15%. How do, we, how do we take care of this mass? Something has to give. And but, like he said, it's about integrity. People must be sure that when you collect this revenue, people are not stealing it. That's the bottom line. So if people know that it's going to developmental efforts, I'm not sure that they will focus too much on that percentage. So we know that we have about 3.2 million. Part of our challenge is how do you formalize everybody? How do we formalize? So these companies, do they have bank accounts? Do they have registered names? Do they have recognizable addresses? Because the reality is that a lot of things that people take for granted in other climes are not things we can take for granted. So people say in London, when you drive congestion charge, OK, you don't see police, but you get a ticket in your address. Well, that's because that address exists. It's not a market. So if somebody gives, so and that's why it's important that we have this data so that we can all live a better life. I'm sure everybody in this room is familiar with, with Teams, which is uh, our own developmental agenda that we've called T3. 
Themes, T H E M E S. Everybody here knows what that means? Ah. Uh -huh. I only hear yes from you, so. <laughs> so, but it's important for us to be able to identify all this because the essence is to make it easier for businesses to operate. So we understand that 85% of the asset of Lagos is in private hands, is in private sector. So the balance sheet of the state is, is not enough to fund the state. That's the truth. Like I said, the budget of Lagos is about $3 billion. $3 billion. The, <laughs> the, the NYPD has a budget of $6 billion. That's New York Police Department. So it means that there has to be a better way to fund our system. And, but we understand that the private sector, people like Inamdi and the rest of them that are doing, we must now help them to do better so that they can take more risk. So if his if it's shop is 70, let's say we have 10 in Lagos, we want him to expand to 15 Lagos because apparently it's not ghosts that we work there. It's human beings, Nigerians. So that's the only way we, so we need to make it easier for businesses to operate and to actually make it easy now. But in order to, in order to do that, in order to do that, we must all then have a playing field. Okay, so it means businesses must register, businesses must be known, you know, everything, so it must also be transparent so that it, you don't have to run after people. The only way technology works is if it is repeatable and predictable. If it is not, then it's up hazard. And that's the only way technology will go. I notice also that you are mentioning Edo State, Edo State. And I was looking around. I said, ah, we are in Sulu Lere. What's going on? <laughs> so I will ask you later, is it that Lagos State has not part partnered with you? Or what is the problem? Because we have trained over time. I was one time commissioner for science and tech, and I know the number that we trained. The challenge also is, after training people with skill, we actually also give them equipment. But the problem is, we found out that 80% we sell that equipment instead of using it. So we realize that part of the thing we also need to do is to reorientate people. So that it's not just train people alone. So part of what our error was that we were training people how to fix computer, how to fix phone. We weren't training them how to think about business. So part of the things that we would like to partner with you that I can take you on is, so instead of us doing the training, we just come to you. You have even made it cheaper anyway, so you are giving us like 75% rebate, and I will hold you to that. <laughs> so instead of 300 that we are training now, we can turn it to 750 because it's cheaper. But seriously, um, I wanted to know, is it that Lagos State has not partnered with you? Or, or what is the problem? So that we can resolve that and you can help us. It's easier for us if you do the training. So like I said, I have a speech, but um, I just junk it. So, but let me just thank uh, Faith Management of Faith Foundation uh, for, I think it's the 19th year that you've been doing this. And I'm sure a lot of people have gone through that system that are lucky enough to go through that system so that at least they are able to have the skills necessary and then the support that they needed. I just hope that we can, they can also come to expand it, you know, and uh, instead of, hopefully, instead of 500 this year, we can scale it to 1,000. So if you need space, you don't have to do it on the island. If you want space, we take you to a Kedja somewhere. You do it. We give you a space that can take 3,000 people. You understand? Uh -huh. so, so let's move it to, let's move it to Meron so that we can help those people in Meron too. Or at Limo Shaw or somewhere. Not all these my brothers in suits and tie like me. <laughs> you understand? So if you need space next year, talk to us. We take you to Meron and you will enjoy it. You will see a lot of good people there. So I want to thank the management of Faith Foundation for this innovation, invitation, and to wish you the best of luck as you continue to partner with everybody, every Nigerian, to support and grow entrepreneurship in our state 
and in, partic in particular, and then Nigeria in general. And to all of us, the small business owners, the reality is everybody starts small. Everybody. Even the big banks, the first banks, everybody starts small. And then today, they are bigger. They are bigger because they follow three rules. Like he said, you must have integrity and honor. If you have integrity and honor, it ultimately pays. It might be tough in the beginning, but it ultimately pays. And then the second is that they have a plan. They have, why do I want to set up that company? Why? Because there are so many ways to make money. But if it's to do something impactful, you will enjoy it, you will then also make money, and you affect people's life positively. And the third one, of course, like you said, is luck. But I'm sure that in our country, that's not a problem because we all go to mosque and we all go to church. Hopefully, we do the right thing after that. So as long as we believe in God, I'm sure the luck will come. But first of all, we must help ourselves in order to actually have that luck. Because like they say, heaven helps those who help themselves. And that is hard work, honor, and integrity. So I can assure you that we, as a state government, we will also be very aggressive in funding SMEs. We have the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. And um, they have given direct loans to about 4,900 people. Uh, we are trying to see how to expand that. We, you know, we've been advised. And there's enough body of literature that says that giving people cash free of charge doesn't help. Body of literature, not my opinion. So we held, where I was in a place where we held a meeting with some American fund that wanted to actually also inject, because they like the model that it's working, people are also... But they said, well, so you give interest at 5%. That's not realistic. Can you increase it to 10? And I said, okay. So why should we do that? And they have like four reasons. That the problem is that when you get people into entitlement mode, it's always difficult to win them off. And that the reality is the interest in your countries, whatever it is, 22%, 23%, that if we can take it to 10, they, can, they will now match. So if we are giving out 25 billion a year, they will match that 25 billion. So it's a decision that we have to make that should we take it from 5% to 10%. It's a decision that we have to make. But, you know, the appetite of that injection also makes it compelling that we should actually think about it and see how that affects people's businesses. Now, the reality is that a lot of people get 1.5 million, 200, 500,000, and so on and so forth. So, if we are able to actually inject and double that, I think that will assist a lot of people. So, I want to thank Faith Foundation and everybody that is in this room for this, and I hope that the deliberation will be great. Whatever you have, shy with us. Like we say, you know, democracy leads to people that is appointed. It doesn't make them the most brightest. So if you have bright ideas, please share with us. Thank you very much.